Okay, it's fair to say that I'm starting to panic a little bit now. I mean, I'm not panicking about the results. I think they've been actually very good for our level. But I'm panicking about the fact that we still haven't really signed anyone. And we've got the transfer deadline day in two days' time. And I'm just trying to find any way possible to bring in any new players in the club. We might be in for a long season. In the last episode, we took on Sheffield Wednesday away from home and beat them three goals to two, which saw us secure our first three points of the season uh, in only the second game of the season. And uh, the results after that have been pretty decent. Uh, and uh, we're looking quite strong. But as I have already mentioned, we don't really have the squad depth to maintain this. Now, following that game against Sheffield Wednesday, we took on Coventry City at home. And now Ennis once again scored uh, as he gave us a lead in the first half. Uh, but then in the second half, we conceded from a corner as Jake Forster Kasky equalised for Coventry City as we dropped points at home. Uh, we then went away to Southend United in the Carabao Cup first round and Blair Spital scored a free kick before Barley Mumba scored a penalty. And then Blair Spital missed a penalty where we won on penalties to go through to the second round to take on Reading. We then took on Bristol Rovers away from home and Alex Blazer scored his first goal for the club as he managed to slot in uh, inside the box now Ennis also scored in that game uh, but we conceded in the second half but we managed to hold on to a 2-1 lead following that match we then went away to Cardiff City who were promoted last season and then EK Ogbo gave us a lead in the first half and then Alex Samuel pounced on a mistake after coming off the bench uh, to chip the goalkeeper and to make it 2-0 and uh, saw us secure all three points in that game as well in the following league game against Huddersfield Town Teddy Bishop scored this fantastic strike inside the box uh, to give us a 1-0 lead but then we conceded a couple minutes later uh, and then conceded in the second half as we lost our first First game of the season to Huddersfield Town by two goals to one. And then in the final game of the recap, we took on Reading away from home. And after dominating the first 60 minutes of the game, we completely capitulated and conceded four in the second half. And uh, we ended up losing by four goals to nil and get knocked out of the competition. It does mean that we take on Swansea City at home in this episode. And this is the game before transfer deadline day. Uh, hence why I've picked it. Uh, because there is a lot that's going to have to go on in the next episode. I mean, I bloody hope so as well. If I have to continue the season with 17 players, we are going to be bottom of the league by November. I can guarantee it. So one of the things that I didn't realise was that one of the players that I put on against Sheffield Wednesday, Anis Mimeti, uh, it was his debut and it's the first time he's actually played for the club since he joined on a free transfer in 2020. I also hadn't realised that his contract had expired three years ago and he's still at the club. He's been at the club since 2021 and has not had a contract. So I decided to do the right thing and give him a contract even though he's clearly not good enough for this level and he's here for another three years. I've basically upgraded him from a mascot to a player. In my desperate attempt to bring in any player possible for the lowest possible fee, uh, I've decided to ask the board to find a senior affiliate, which I should have done about three years ago. I've also just found out from the media that they have predicted us to finish 20th despite my troubles in bringing new players into the club. You can see the level of progression I've done at the club where now there's considered 14 worse than us in the league. But we have managed to make one sign-in after the game against Sheffield Wednesday, and I've put, basically put all the finances together and managed to get some money in. Uh, so joining us on loan for the rest of the season from Queen's Park Rangers is Zidane Iqbal. It's another former Manchester United player. I mean, we're pretty much becoming the Manchester United reject side. But he can play on the left wing and in the number 10 role, where we'll most likely be using him this season. Uh, but he's a very decent option to have, and just, you know, gives us a bit more depth in that position. And also, because I was just desperate to make a sign-in. Now, I brought Zidane Iqbal with 30 minutes left on the clock in our two one win over Bristol Rovers but the media wanted to focus on the fact that he scored on his debut for QPR in 2022 it's now 2024 what he's done nothing in between probably just sat at home twiddling his thumbs until someone gave him a chance in another futile attempt to bring in any players into the club uh, I did ask the board to do an open trial day and then they went and did one and uh, to be honest when I actually went to go and watch the trial game it was possibly some of the worst football I've ever seen which actually does say a lot because I definitely did get tanked 6-2 by Peterborough United once and I saw one of their strikers who ended up going down the league like score four goals against me. Also, some transfer news was that Liam Cullen, who I actually signed on a new deal in the summer, has rejected a contract offer from Vancouver and then proceeded to reject one from Aberdeen straight after that. And to be honest, Liam Cullen is the difference between me struggling for the rest of the season and me actually being able to bring in some players. Look at this twat. Look at this prat. So the board came back to me a couple of days before the transfer deadline day and said that they found a few senior affiliates and we decided to choose Arsenal because they have the best youth squad uh, for me to poach all their players from. But I think the other teams that I had to pick from were like Manchester United, Tottenham. Uh, so clearly the board picked teams that followed the same ethos as us, which is to bottle every opportunity to win any silverware. And this is where I put a trophy. If I had one! We now move into our game against Swansea City at home and I have just about managed to name 18 players. Uh, so I'm kind of glad... Uh, uh, that we do have a full squad to pick from. Daniel Grimshaw will take his place in goal in this game because I'm not very happy with how Martin Bulcher has been playing recently. Uh, he didn't really have a good performance in the previous game against Huddersfield, so I've decided to put Daniel Grimshaw back into the side. 
We stick with the same back four that we've probably played this season. Uh, as Keen Bryan will go to left back, Zed Medley and uh, Kane Ramsey will be our centre backs, and Bali Mumba will be our right back. We go with Jacob Davenport and Alex Patterson being our two central midfielders, with Mark Helm playing ahead of them in the number 10 role. Alex Blazer and EK Ogbo will be our wingers, while Noah Ennis once again will lead the line for us. And uh, yeah, it's pretty much a strong team, the strongest team I can name at the moment. Uh, but as you can see on the table on the right, uh, we're doing fairly well. We're just outside the playoffs. A win here could actually send us into the top two. I mean, it's quite exciting. Now, as I was looking at the team sheets, I saw that Swansea had a pretty decent side looking at it, until I realised they're playing Jason Cummings up front. The Jason Cummings? Fuck me, you might as well just give us the three points now. We don't even have to play. But this is a good chance for us to, you know, solidify our position at the top half of the table and maybe even push into the playoff spots because, you know, I would like to get Wickham as high as possible in the league. And if we somehow manage to achieve something special with this squad that I currently have at my disposal, it's the greatest script you could ever write for any footballing fairy tale. I suppose it would be on par with how Tottenham Hotspur managed to get themselves into the European Super League. After about eight minutes, Mark Helm got the ball on the edge of the box and then ran into the area where he was taken out by Frank Fabra, uh, the Swansea left back, and we managed to get a penalty. And Barley Mumba has yet to miss a penalty in Wickham Colours, so it's quite fitting that he chose this time to put the penalty wide. The right back would try to make amends a couple minutes later by putting a wonderful ball at the back post for E.K. Ogbo to head straight at the Swansea goalkeeper. And then he would be involved in the next highlight as then he played the ball into Alex Blazer, who then managed to dribble his way into the Swansea area, but then fired the ball wide. It has pretty much been all lost so far. Our dominance would continue into the first half as Barley Mumba then played the ball into Alex Blazer, who this time, instead of shooting, then played the ball across the box to Niall Ennis to fire it in and to give us a 1-0 lead. I feel like Niall Ennis is very underappreciated at the club. I mean, it's just such a common occurrence now that Niall Ennis is just scoring all the time for me. But isn't it great that the world is about 4.3 billion years old and we've been lucky enough to be sharing the planet with players such as Lionel Messi, Olivier Giroud and Niall Ennis? Swansea's first highlight came 10 minutes just before half time as Frank Fabra's ball in the box found McDermott but he headed the ball straight at Daniel Grimshaw but within the same highlight Philip Billing picked up the ball on the centre circle and then drove towards the edge of our box where then he played the ball into Josh Thomas who fired it past Daniel Grimshaw to make it 1-1. I mean I say this a lot of the time but that is definitely very undeserved. Literally their first highlight came about two minutes ago and now they've scored to make it 1-1. Well that was not expected was it? And as we were fast approaching half time we did get another chance as EK Ogbo then fizzed the ball into the box and now Ennis to fire straight into Frank Fabra who managed to block the ball and get it away. And those two will link up again just a few minutes later as EK Ogbo then slid the ball through for now and it's to be one-on-one -on -one with the keeper. But then he fired it at Matt Ingram who then pushed it out for a corner. And one of the more entertaining first halves we've had on this series so far came to an end as uh, we took Swansea in at 1-1. And we've probably been the better side. I mean, they've had two shots, two on target and they've managed to score from one of them. And we've had nine and four on target. I mean, we clearly deserve to be ahead. And after telling the boys at half time that I had faith in them to win the game, Alex Blazer then drove towards the edge of the Swansea box and then played the ball onto E.K. Ogbo, who only proceeded to fire the ball wide. I know exactly what's going to happen now. We're going to be made to pay for these chances we're missing. It was at this time I decided to bring on Alex Samuel onto the right wing and then moved Alex Blazer into the centre midfielder role, taking off Alex Patterson. And then with 15 minutes left on the clock, Noel Ennis then laid the ball into Mark Helm, who found himself through on goal, but one-on-one -on -one with the keeper, then fired it against the bar, and it then came out and then Swansea cleared. And my fears early in the game were realised as then Brendan Galloway found some space on the left-hand side, put a ball into the box for Cameron Conn Grave, who had come off the bench to make it 2-1 to Swansea. Why, oh, why, oh, why do I put myself through this shit? Swansea haven't even been that good, and yet we're 2-1 down to them. We started to ramp up the pressure pretty rapidly, and Keane Bryan then got the ball into the box at EK Ogbo to then fire at Matt Ingram, who did a fairly good save to push it wide. And the left winger would be denied again a couple minutes later as on the counter-attack in the 90th minute. He then ran down the middle and then forced Matt Ingram into another fantastic save. And that was it. We'd lost 2-1 to Swansea. Brilliant. They, they didn't really trouble us at all. We had 20 shots on goal. They had four, and we lost by two goals to one. For once, the shithouse club, the football, has been actually shithoused. And this isn't helping my situation at all, because I'm definitely going to panic by now. 